Good evening, everybody. Hello, I'm Julian. Welcome to our channel, Julian Marcus. And uh, tonight we wanted to talk about a topic uh, in one of the videos we mentioned that we had met 20 years ago. And I guess both of us, for different reasons, we were not in, in a position to hold a relationship. We were all over the place. <laughs> <laughs> so then years passed by, then we hook up later on. We got together and um, Marcus' position and my position has been, of course, much better than many years ago. So I want to ask Marcus a few questions. He went to a big, big, big change in his life. And like he mentioned, he was a... I was what? A recording. Oh, I'm a, <laughs> uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Sorry, sorry. No, um, no Julian was, uh, was talking to me earlier today and he was saying that he thinks that uh, we should uh, make sort of like a, a message, a public service announcement. Right, a message um, of hope. Well, I am... Um, I'm a recovering addict. I've been sober for 15 years, uh, five months, and um, it wasn't it wasn't the uh, the prettiest journey, uh, but it was worth it. I, I can say that. Um, I started using um, drugs and alcohol at a very very young age. I was about 18 years old, and um, at the time, it was a lot of fun, and um, I was still able to uh, go to work and hang out with my friends and go shopping and all of those normal things that people do, you know, uh, on a regular basis. Um, but as time went on, um, I became addicted, and uh, for me... Uh, what happened is, is that I, uh, I could no longer control the use like I did in the beginning. Um, I basically traded my normal everyday life for drugs and alcohol. Um, in the end, I was uh, homeless. Um, I had stole stolen money from my roommate, like $1,500. And um, I went on a bench for like two days. And um, yeah, basically when I came back, um, I couldn't, I wasn't allowed back into the house. Wow. You know, and uh, that still didn't stop me. Um, I used a couple of days more and um, I ended up, uh, calling a uh, a client of mine because I was still working, and um, and I knew that she was in recovery. And uh, how do you I, knew? Uh, because she talked to me about it oh, uh, okay. plenty of times. She knew I had a problem way before I was willing to admit it. Okay. You know, um, we still uh, keep in contact. She still gets her hair done. Uh, she helped save my life, basically. Wow. You know, um, I used to keep my picture from the rehab. But anyway, um, what happened is, is that I called her and, and I told her, like, you know, I'm ready to go. Um, I need some help. I, I'm done, you know. And I think it was the desperation of being homeless. And... Um, because I had never been homeless before. Like when I lived in Detroit and I was using, um, because my, my drug addiction was bad way before I moved to Miami. You know, wow. um, when, um, even when I was in Detroit, I, I wasn't homeless. You know, my mother basically, uh, and I don't want to say this in a bad way, but she's my mother and you know how mothers are, but she basically enabled me. Uh, she uh, made sure I had a place to stay, that I ate every day. She even gave me money sometimes, you know. Um, she would come and rescue me from the the, the, the drug hole um, when I couldn't make it home. You know, I was just too tired. I've been up for days. But, yeah, she basically enabled me. And um, 
I think me moving or I know me moving to Miami, Florida and being away from my family made me grow up a little bit and it made me have to depend on myself only, you know. So uh, moving forward, um, I called my client and I told her, you know, like, um, I'm done and uh, I, I'm ready to go and get some help, you know. And she took me to, well, she called one of her friends because she actually works in the uh, recovery field. Uh, and um, she called one of her friends and um, this lady uh, came and uh, talked to me. I had done her hair before. And, um, and uh, she... Basically, she called, uh, there's a, a, a service for homeless and, and drug addicts in the city of Miami. It's, they call them the green shirts. And um, she called the green shirts and they picked me up on the corner of my, where I was staying, you mm -hmm. know, and um, they took me to treatment. And um, I went to treatment. Um, I was there. I was only supposed to be there for 90 days, but after about three months of being there, um, something changed and, um, in you, yeah, inside of me, you know, um, I was able to be honest. Um, I was able to really look at my, or what my life had become. And, um, and I decided that I should stay longer. Wow. One because I was afraid to to leave because mm -hmm. I didn't I really didn't want to get high, you know, and um, the other reason was I wanted to be sure or a little more sure than what I was at three months sober about um, what I was doing and and this path that I was taking. So I ended up staying for. 11 months and um i never forget it my 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 counselor was this like uh, uh this this guy he was from uh barbados and he had this really thick uh bajan accent and um and i told him uh like the day before my uh uh commencement he's i told him i said i'm afraid to lose uh to leave you know, what if I use? And he said, he, and he told me, he said, um, you always have a moment to change your mind. Wow. You have to go and get the drugs. They are, they don't jump in your hand or appear in your hand. You have to go and get the drugs. So when you go and get the drugs, there's a time between you before you get there to get the drugs, you can change your mind. And even if you have the drugs, there's a moment where you have to prepare and get ready to use the drugs where you can change your mind. You know what I'm saying? So for me, it made me mindful of what I was doing. You know what I'm saying? And I always had another option to change my mind. You know, mm -hmm. I, I could choose one day at a time, one moment at a time to not use. And, um, and that day I decided to, to do that, to not use each and every day that I woke up or that I wake up, I decide not to use. No, I'm not a, a, an, um, an AA guru, a guru, or, um, I'm not one of those people who, who feel that other people around me are drinking and I get upset. No, I've learned in 15 years and a few months that what the other person does, that's what he does. The gift that I got from being sober and clean is that now I know what is wrong with me. Now I know what I can do and what I can't do. And I cannot do drugs and have a boyfriend or, or have a business or, um, 
have a job or people trust me when I do drugs, I'm totally, totally different person. And today at this moment, I don't want to be that person anymore. And I've made that decision every day up until this day. And by the grace of God, when I wake up tomorrow, I'll make the same decision. And that decision is to stay clean and sober, uh, put one foot in front of the over, in front of the other, and take it one day at a time, one moment at a time, one second at a time, whatever it is, you know, um, and do it to the best of my ability. Um, I know people who have relapsed, and I have relapsed. And it only took me one time to realize that this is not for that me anymore. Weird. Yeah. How long ago was that? Uh, 15 years ago. Oh, wow. Because I went to drug treatment twice. I didn't go once. I went twice. The first time I went, I stayed like 28 days and I left. And I I was on a a drug run for a whole year. When I, In fact, when I got back to the treatment center, they still had my records inside of the center. They hadn't sent them to the, the front office. They were still there. And in that, in that moment, I knew this is where I needed to be, right here at that drug treatment center. So, yeah. Wow. So uh, that's my story, and I'm sticking to it. <laughs> <laughs> no changes? <laughs> oh, no, no, no. Yeah, but it's been a lot of changes, but, you know... Um, it's all been worth it, you know. Um, I feel better in my body just being sober, you know. Um, I'm totally present for whatever happens. I was going to say that, right. You know, it's not before I was always late. I was always, um, you know, uh, the last one or... Um, you know, um, how things in life happen and you always get the short end of the stick or you feel like that. Well, that doesn't happen to me anymore or much anymore. You know, I'm very, very present. And that's the one of the biggest gifts that I got being sober wow. is that I'm always aware. So, like I said, that's my story and I'm sticking to it. Um, and if there is anyone out there that is... Um, on drugs and alcohol and they feel like they're at their end um, and that you need help, um, you can contact me on here, uh, on Julian Marcus Arias on YouTube, or you can contact us on our Facebook um, and also um, my Instagram, uh, The Alchemy Master. And uh, yeah, I can um, help you get uh, in touch with the right people to get you going on the right path. So Very thank important. you for letting me share. Now, let me ask you, you used to have a salon before the one that we had now. Mm -hmm. uh, tell me in a short uh, answer, how, I mean, how do you handle that? How, how, how happened? How had that happened? Well, um, uh, the salon before, um, I look at it as a learning experience because, um, I was, uh, much younger and, um, the, 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 the partner that I had was very, very wealthy. So, um, I didn't, I didn't have to work and he took care of basically everything, you know? So I would just, uh, save my money. And one day I looked around and I had like, uh, like forty, fifty thousand dollars saved up, and um, I opened a salon. Like within a month, I opened a salon, fully decorated everything, and um, I hired all of the wrong people. I um, did a lot of the wrong things. You know, my attitude was wrong. My thinking was uh, was not correct. Um, I was too busy spending the money <laughs> instead of uh, saving it for a rainy day. Right. You know? And um, the biggest thing or the, the biggest lesson that I learned from that experience is 
um, friendship and business do not mix. Right. I had a really horrible experience with someone who I've been friends with for years. When I tell you, like, we have been friends for like eight or nine years. And uh, yeah, and it just didn't turn out good. So um, this time around, um, I'm, I listen to what Julian has to say because he, he his mind is really good for business and um, figures. And um, also, um, I don't hire any of my friends, you know, right. I may cut one of my friends hair or do one of my friends hair or, or whatever, but that's as far as it goes, you know, um, it doesn't work out for me well. So, and I learned that and, and I keep that. But when you say that the reason that that particular salon got closed was for the uh, drug abuse? No, I was sober then. Oh, you were sober already? Right. Mm-hmm. And all this I was sober like uh, maybe uh, four or five years at that point. Okay. Yeah. Um, recovery is is like um, learning all of the things over that your parents taught you growing up. You know, values and morals and stuff like that, and how to save money. It entails everything. And for me, um, like I said, it wasn't an easy path for me to get sober because sober is not just the the uh, not using drugs and alcohol. Being sober means you're 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 like recovering in all aspects of your life. The disease affects you mentally, Everything. emotionally, spiritually, financially. Mm -hmm. You know, so. Um, you have to recover in all of those areas. And at that particular time in my life, um, I thought it was all about me and what all of that I wanted. That's what happened. You know, yes. I had a, uh, uh, 50, $60,000 watch on my arm, you know, a platinum bracelet, you know, everything designer, you know, $5,000 pair of shoes, you know, I could change them every day, you know, And um, in the end, I lost everything because I was not financially sober. I was not prepared. I didn't save a dime. I spent every spent dime. Price. Exactly right. You know? So, yeah. So, um, like, if you have any questions or concerns and you have a business, Talk to Julian. He's really good with that. He makes really good budgets. He can tell you exactly what you need to do because that's this time. That's how I am able to continue to keeping my salon open, even during the pandemic. Right. You know? And um, because we he he has me on a budget. And I know what I can do and what I can't do. You know, and. Um, Yeah, as long as as long as uh, the bills are paid, I'm okay. Right. You know, I don't care about new shoes or new clothes. I have a closet full of clothes, and honestly, I haven't worn them in the past year because I always wear t-shirts and jeans to work. Simple. Yeah. So you know. Now a question. I think you answered that. So would you say that the uh, when you find out that you have a problem? was when you became homeless? No, you know, I always knew I had a problem um, well into like, I don't know. I started when I was 18, when I think around 25, 24, 25, I knew I had a, a problem because, you know, that's where I, my family, like over half of the members in my family, my uncles, my aunts, uh, my cousins, Everybody used drugs and drank, you know, and uh, it was like, it's like uh, a genetic thing for me, you know, right. I'm predisposed to be a drug addict, you know, so, but um, yeah, I don't, uh, what, what did you say? 
that uh it it when you become homeless is that what the re no i didn't okay. the reason you that i um the reason that i knew that i had a problem was because of all of the things that i had experienced way before i became homeless i've been shot at i've been stabbed um wow. i i was beat one time so bad i was in a coma all over drugs you know so um yeah i always knew it's just a a point or a moment where you have that where you're I guess your soul just is like, I can't do this anymore. You know, we need to do something else. Right. You know, I was done. I was finished. The gig was way up a long time ago. Right. You know, so. Now, one question. Uh, since 15 years ago, when you been clean, had you have a time or a moment or a period or circumstances that say, that you say, um, I'm going to fall? That he was stressed on, that he shake you. Um... No, um, honestly, um, when I was using and drinking, I always had an excuse to drink <laughs> and get right. high. I always had an excuse. Right. So, being sober and clean, I've used up all of my excuses. I don't have an excuse. You know what I mean? To to drink or drug. I lost people when I was getting high. I wasn't present. Even my grandfather, that hurt me worse than anything in my life. And, and the part that hurt me was is that I didn't get sober until after he died. He never got to see me sober wow. from the time I was 15 years old. You know? And yes, it has been some days where it's been hard and I'm upset or someone does something to me. But that doesn't mean I use and and I don't lie to myself about that because right. it's not there is never a convenient time in my life. I don't have a reservation whatsoever about drinking and drugging. There is no time in my life where it's okay for me to drink and drug because right. I would be lying to myself that it's okay because I know what happens when I drink and drug. I cannot stop. One is not enough. And, you know, once I put one in my body, it's That's over. It. Right. It's over. There, I'm not going to have an apartment. I'm not going to have a car. It's going to be a midnight madness sale in this damn house. <laughs> you know? Because that's how I am. Right. You know? And and as long as I am honest with myself about that. Right. That you understand. I can stay sober. Right. I'm not going to lie to myself and say, oh, I can do it one time. I've never been able to do one ever, never in the, right. in all the, in the 22, 23 years that I use drugs, I have never been able to do one. I can drink the whole bottle. I can have the whole sack. It's still not enough. Not enough. I'm not that kind of person. Right. So you know yourself. I know that Very about important. myself. Yes. Okay. Yes. Mm -hmm. Well, the reason that I asked uh, Marcus these questions and like a service announcement, like uh, hope uh, for people to have faith, whoever see this and had this particular problem, is that since I was a child, I always been surrounded by people, uh, users, alcohol, uh, drugs, all kinds of stuff, all my life. I always been surrounded by that. Friends, uh, all over. So, and I've been to ANA meetings, many times taking multiple people at different times in my life. And by the way, two or three partners. <laughs> Not this one. No, 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 no. <laughs> so um, every time that I go there and I see multiple people in different levels from different ethnicities, different languages, different countries, different cultures, and you see people very educated sometimes and they see the evil and the monster and the monkey that they have on themselves so it very my heart to see that no matter who you are or what you have in life when you have a problem you have a problem there's nothing you can do it's an evil that will take you away little by little by little i will destroy each and every part of your family you become a thief a liar you you i mean you need to kill you might kill 
And that's a terrible, terrible thing. I've been to meetings where I literally cry because I see the hope that people have wanted to be clean and they can't. And that happens to me uh, three or four years ago. I was seeing somebody and I went to this and and I know that uh, that is part of mine was trying to, you know, get clean. And it really, really, and I, all the experiences that I have, and it's very difficult to see somebody like that. And we, Marcus, I have seen that uh, he takes a lot of phone calls and he, and I really love, and he's very sweet to me. When it's only because I'm a hairdresser, that's all. No, but you've been, <laughs> you've been, I, I, of course I wouldn't say any names, yeah. but I know you've been on the phone talking to people and coming down and explaining this and explaining that and telling them this. So I always say, uh, what, thank you for that phone call because what you did, you gave somebody hope. If you can do it, somebody can do it. Oh, yeah. And uh, talking to people about depression and, and drugs and alcohol and where to get treated in and, and if, talking to them. And that's very important. So this is actually a message of hope, faith, and hopefully it will help somebody. And like he says, if there's somebody who are hearing this and uh, think that you might, you might be that person, by all means, call, test, uh, Marcus, um, call us. Let us know. I have taken a lot of people to Alcoholicos Anonymous myself. I've been there <laughs> for multiple reasons for years and years with several people. So we know, I don't know as much as him, but here is the master. The oh, master. right. The alchemy yeah, master. I don't, I don't the <laughs> so imagine. Oh, okay. So I guess all of these prepare him to be now a, a, a working person, a good partner. I really trust you a lot. Um, I'm so proud of you, Thank uh, you. Thank being you. able to share this story and what you have said in the past and what you have told people. So hopefully this helps somebody. So please, guys, um, like, like right, like comment, us. subscribe, and let us know exactly what you would like to hear from us. Exactly. Uh, take care then, and we talk to you soon. Good night. Good night. Bye-bye. Ciao.